It is resolved that the Board of Education uphold the determination of the superintendent with regard to the suspension of a particular student in its entirety. May I have a motion, please? Okay. May I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Noes? Abstains? Abstain. Resolution passes. Who abstains? Andy. <coughs> Next, we have public comment. Mr. Mayor will be kind enough um, to explain the policy. We have set aside 10 minutes for public comment. Um, All right. Here we go. Okay. So, just as a, as a course of uh, reiterating the intent and the policy itself, so the board encourages public participation in all matters at these meetings. Um, you're given 10 minutes at the beginning of the meeting and 10 minutes at the end of the meeting. <coughs> the, it should be brief. Speakers may comment on any school-related matter during the open session. Speakers um, presenting complaints must have first gone through the established complaint procedures and the board reserves the right to delay action for later meetings. Now the board will not permit public session discussion involving individual district personnel students. Um, first and foremost, just as just as a reminder that that uh, these board meetings are meetings of the board held in public. They're not meetings with the public. But the public sessions are a great place to get feedback from the community if you haven't otherwise already done so by either through a district clerk or by email or so forth. So it's encouraged to get to, to get feedback. Uh, we just want to make sure that there's decorum um, for privacy. Yeah, I'm gonna make number, I'm gonna be calling number yes, right? yeah. um, Duly noted. So we want to make sure that we don't talk about specific people, good or bad. Uh, we just cannot address specific personnel, students, anyone. Um, during regular business, uh, all speakers to conduct themselves in a civil manner, obscene language, libelous statements, threats of violence statements, so advocating racial, religious, or other forms of prejudice will not be tolerated. So, it's just about behavior. And uh, the president is responsible for orderly conduct. I think that kind of summarizes the intent. I just want to add a comment. There's no visual or audio um, of Pauline Stone on the computer, so um, I think Gary rep is represented that she was going to be part of this meeting. Well, I think they're trying to, Andy. They're, Gary's working on it. I just want the record to be clear. Okay. And so the record that Mr. Lambert is trying to make sure that she, she was on earlier. Yes, she was. has gone off, and now he's trying to recover the, the video and audio. So technically, she is in attendance. No, she's not. She's not. Um, she has, she, attendance has been taken. She was here. She was All right, here. so we've set aside 10 minutes for public comment. If anyone would like to approach the board at this time, um, you're welcome to do so. Please step forward and state your name, but please remember we talk about concepts, not people, or students, or faculty. Thank you. Kathy, I had a question. Are board members district personnel or students? Um, we do not talk about specific people in public session. Okay, so specific people. Okay. Thank you. So since I'm an absolute novice to your uh, mm -hmm. proceedings, and I'm going to probably run all over them. Where do you stand normally? Like, over here at the podium? Yeah. Or? Yeah. The microphone. The microphone. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So my name is uh, Doug Seaman. I'm uh, a member of the community, and I'm not here for any individual or student. I'm here because my son had come home and had taken what was called a Clinton okay. County. Hold on one second. Um, you're referring to a specific student. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, it's a school okay. thing. So okay. Clinton County, New York, 2018 PNA survey. So have you talked to the teacher or principal about this? Like in, in well, I, I spoke to the, uh, the middle school principal uh, very briefly, very nice lady. 
Um, she provided me some information in regards to what this was. I thought that this would be a question that I would be able to ask the school board um, just some various questions in regards to this survey as in who the third party that uh, was taking this, the, where the raw data was going, who was collecting the raw data, who was overseeing this, um, are, what various third parties are there. Um, and I just wanted to read one of the, well actually four of the things that it states right out of the gate. So, um, I, 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 I could be wrong here. Okay. okay? But I, I know I wouldn't be wrong in saying that if you sat down with the principal mm -hmm. and went through these questions, that she would absolutely, in accordance with policy, do her level best to answer them on the spot. And what she couldn't answer on the spot, okay. she, would, she would research and find the answer for you. And if you weren't satisfied at that point, then you could reduce your concerns in writing to me, and I would do my level best to give you any information that, that's different that surfaces. Okay. And then I would inform the board. I think it's. I think the way the policy reads, I was, it would inform the board as needed. So I'm not trying to dissuade you, but I, I would know that the board wouldn't be familiar to a middle school survey. I'm sorry. Well, and, and no, and the reason why I'm asking is it wasn't a survey in which the school itself had completed. I mean, again, it's a third party. So I was just wondering if the board was aware of the Clinton County, New York 2018 PNA survey. Um, we do not, we are, I am not aware of it. I don't have a student okay. in the middle school, so. And, it, and I got no problem. And, and understand, and, and I apologize that if, yeah, I'm, if I'm doing anything wrong procedurally, because this is something in which I normally, normally I don't want to come here. Right. Normally I'm going to allow you guys to do what you do. Um, and just so you know for future reference, public comment is you make a comment, we absorb all your lovely information. So no Q&A? We don't usually have, <laughs> no, it's not usually a discussion. What we would do is refer you back to your building principal, um, and then we would follow the steps. Since your eyes, your eyes, and your eyes have pointed behind me directly, so I'm taking <laughs> yes. the, uh, the nice she lady that is in the front row all the way. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I haven't stepped in it too deeply. All right, <laughs> so, so basically, and, and, and I just want to make sure I'm clear, you would like me to have a conversation more so with her first, and absolutely. then if I have any more concerns to come to you, because I'm coming to you guys anyways. I, I just, I, so this is my public comment. Uh -huh. I, I have an issue with consent of a minor on doing a third party survey. I'm trying to address that. Okay. So let me address the board and maybe the information will come out that way. Um, as part of policies through New York State School Boards Association, we have for many years been getting a lot of modifications to our policies that initially became a question with testing and data going out to third party, right? And so a lot of that information was modified so that no names of any students went out, just some random numbers associated with students only known here. So our policy manual does cover quite a bit Hello, of, Gary. Of, of protection that any information that we're gathering from students is not given out in any way with specific detailed information about family, students' names, anything like that. If there's anything gathered and sent to the state or somewhere, we have policy that, that makes sure that we do not send out detailed information. And I'm glad you said that, and the only reason why I'm, is that, from my understanding, these are not written as in like when, how when we went to school where it would be a bubble sheet, pen, number two pencil, it is actually taken by a, uh, a laptop. A laptop has a very distinctive, unique IP address and that would be a question also too that I would have is are you guys using a VPN because if you're not, every single individual is being categorized and that information is being obtained for individuals. And I was under the assumption by New York State rules that you're not supposed to do that. But again, I apologize. I, I overstepped a few Good bounds. Question. And Good questions. I think we'll take a look at Let me probably well, point you in the direction of our 21st century learning folks as well to you know, bring up some good questions. Okay. If you want to protect your, your child and every child's. Well, absolutely. And look, I, and, and, and this is not about 
stepping on anybody or trying to slap wrists. I just I was a little alarmed with usually it's the you know somebody tugs somebody's hair, somebody pushed somebody down the hall, and, you know, and then when I heard surveys surveys leading to studies and research, I was like, whoa, pump the bricks, what's going on here? Okay. All right, I'll go back to the principal after the meeting. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is there anyone else that would like to address the board at this time? All right. Seeing that we have no one stepping forward, I would like to move on to presentations. Our first presentation is the NEA grant. Our presenter will be Colleen McDonald, grant coordinator. Hi. Yes, I don't know. I don't work here. I'm just, I'm just oh, at a meeting. Hey. Um, I don't usually stand behind a mic because as a 32-year retired educator, I have a teacher voice. Um, and when I stand behind a mic, it often gets unbearably loud. Um, so thank you, and I really appreciate you welcoming me here tonight. My name is Colleen McDonald. I'm a nationally board-certified teacher. And as I just told you, I retired several years ago after a 32-year career in education. Um, I've taught special education, I've been an administrator, I've been a middle school principal, and then I went back to the classroom as an English language arts teacher. So it was very circuitous and I got to see all the different corners of the education world. Um, before I moved to Cambridge, I actually sat in one of your seats for three years um, in my hometown. So um, Having had this perspective, one of the things several years ago, about five or six years ago, we looked at was teacher preparation and the need to really enhance um, what we were seeing in the southern end of the county in terms of our new teachers and the preparation. So it started through um, an STLE grant, um, and we were working with the Queensbury campus, and we actually extended our student teaching in Cambridge so that it wasn't two eight-week sessions, it was one 16-week placement. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But I'm sure you've all heard about the teacher shortage. Um, and in the next decade, uh, it's estimated that across the country we're going to be hiring between 1.5 million and 1.6 million new teachers. Um, so that's one of the reasons this is really important to our schools. Um, I also have here with me tonight um, Sarah Hackett, who is our program liaison. Uh, she's a faculty at SUNY Plattsburgh. <coughs> I'm sure most of you know her. She's developed an incredible partnership with Beekman Town. Um, Sarah, do you want to give them a wave? <laughs> um, so we started, whoops, uh, this rocker. Here we go. All right. I got it, Gary. No problem. Um, <laughs> as you can see, those are all our partners that we started with originally, and we brought Beekman Town on uh, last year, which we were super happy to do. Um, this originally was a grant. The NEA is the National Education Association. They have a fund called the Great Public School Fund, and we were able to secure a grant from them uh, for three years. This is the end of our second year. We're heading into our third year. Um, so what we looked at was, what are we trying to solve? What do we want to do during this preparation program? And there's three main problems right now that most school districts are facing. And that's recruitment of new teachers, retention of new teachers, Retention of good teachers, right? Even your mid or late career teachers. And the perception of teaching. We all have a perception of teaching. And often it's not, it doesn't necessarily mesh with the reality of teaching. Um, we all cornered our stuffed animals or our little brothers and sisters when we were young. And we played teacher. Um, we've taught our own children maybe how to ride a bike. Um, but while those things are true, um, juggling 15, 20, 25, 30 students in a classroom with 15, 20, 25, or 30 various learning needs um, and having content that you need to get through is a different act of professionalism than what we usually think about when we think about teaching. 
So we wanted to look at that mismatch. The research is very clear that effective, effective teaching is the number one key factor in student learning, followed closely by building leadership. Um, and that teacher candidates too often aren't ready for like the complexity of teaching. Uh, after our residents, our first cohort, were in the field for the first couple of weeks, and I stopped in and interviewed them and said, so where's the rubber meeting the road for you? Your thoughts about teaching and what it really is. And one of the elementary residents looked at me and said, oh my God, I never realized that teachers have to do everything like bus lists and make sure kids have their lunches or lunch money or their coats or their boots or like all the other things that we do uh, in the mode of teaching. So this is our traditional model. The traditional model of student teaching actually started in the 1950s. It was two seven or eight week placements and that totals 560 hours. So um, Basically what would happen is the college would approach a school uh, and ask for volunteer teachers to accept student teachers. I've taken many in, in my lifetime. Um, and there was little contextual connection to what they were learning in their academic program and what the school district necessarily needed or was doing on the ground programs that they were offering, district priorities, those different things. Um, so the problem that we found with this model is that New York State, as you know, has seven really good teaching standards that teachers are held accountable to. And in two seven or eight week placements, it's really difficult to be able to not only like to wrap your arms around those seven standards. So knowledge of knowing your students is the first standard. If you're only in a class, in a new school, in a new building with, <coughs> suppose you're a middle school English teacher and you have 100 kids that are going through your classroom, knowing those students well in seven weeks is a challenge um, and a really difficult one. So we looked at that. Um, Charlotte Danielson once said that teaching is a complex act and estimated that teachers make more than 3,000 non-trivial decisions a day. Um, they are second only to emergency room uh, trauma unit physicians. So we wanted to prepare classroom ready teachers. Um, this is what our continuum looks like. You can tell it's a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm a, a total color person, so and a visual person, so I apologize if anyone uh, has trouble with colors. Um, the orange is the district. The gray is uh, traditionally the higher ed with the master's program. So what we've done is we've layered this experience to make it much richer and deeper and longer. Um, the resident starts in the program uh, and they're there for two years as opposed to seven or eight weeks. Uh, we've, that's increased the number of hours directly with students to 2,800 which is a 500% increase. Um, what does the Classroom Academy provide? Well, we can't, in, in all seriousness, if we want to be equitable and attract residents who want to be teachers and not just kids who can afford to have their parents like support them while they volunteer for two years, um, we had to offer a living stipend. So we offer our residents $22,000 a year for participating in the program, and they're full-time in the classroom for those two years. Um, they're immersed from day one in a, in a setting. Uh, we have the potential teachers interview them, and they're matched because it's also not a short-term program. This is a professional relationship that we want to build and last. Um, so they're matched with their lead teacher, and they learn and practice and develop the knowledge and skills uh, that the college requires in their great rigorous program, but they do it in the context where they might actually teach um, in school communities. <coughs> so what that does is it delivers classroom-ready teachers the first day. So if you were to hire one of the residents that you brought on, uh, they've been two years in your school community. They've sat through parent conferences, they've participated, they've um, 
done all kinds of the extra pieces within your school community. They know, um, they know the kids, they know the faculty, um, they know the climate, and more importantly, they know your academic programs and they know your academic priorities because the principal has been able to shape their learning experience within the building where they are. Uh, we currently, as part of the grant, have <coughs> data points, we've established targets, and we're doing a mixed methods research study. Um, we monitor um, in partnership with, of course, the college, the development application and practice of uh, the residents' growth. And what are we finding? So one of the things we do is we um, have surveyed parents in the fall and in the spring. And as you can see in the fall, they're kind of all over the place. They're not really sure about the residency program, don't really know about it. By the spring, uh, they strongly believe that it's benefited their child. Uh, we also ask them if it's, if it's helped with their child's <coughs> academics or been a positive impact on student learning. Uh, as you can see, in the fall, it's kind of all over. And in the spring, again, it solidly moves to um, extremely and very much. Finally, we asked them if we thought it should continue, if their district should continue to invest in this model. Um, and in the fall, there's some unsureness. In the spring, not so much. I'll give you a minute to read some of the comments that actually came off actual surveys. And of course, I'll say that uh, parents obviously are a, a part of our tax base, and so it's really important that as taxpayers um, and people who are directly involved with the periphery of this program that they feel it's a positive investment. So we talked about that. Oh, gotta love this. Um, one of your teachers who's on the sixth grade team who is leading uh, with resident Brad Clark, who is here tonight as well. Brad, do I give him a wave? Um, uh, Brad is with the sixth grade team. And this was Scott's reaction uh, when I asked him for a um, comment. He also sent a very nice letter to the superintendent. I apologize, I should have struck out Brad's name. <laughs> um, so we're producing classroom ready novices. We also are doing a norm and um, norm referenced in um, the, the term statistically would probably be uh, validated uh, tripod survey, which is a survey that actually the students fill out about the resident and it's their perception of the resident. We also do that in the fall and in the spring so one of the interesting things we looked at this year was the residents' growth from being a first-year resident to a second-year resident. So those are the scores that are there uh, from fall to fall. And you can see that all of our second-year residents grew considerably. What's really interesting is the national average, Tripod doesn't survey candidates typically. They survey teachers of record of all levels of experience. And the national average for those teachers who are actually teachers and certified in teaching is 303 points. And our residents uh, started at that level and have greatly exceeded that in the second fall. So we're pretty proud of them. Um, the other thing that's a little bit different is that teacher preparation has um, very much traditionally lived in the higher education world and they've owned it. Um, and so as part of this partnership, we've really developed a shared governance. Um, we're the people that are consuming these new teachers, and so we need to be um, as uh, committed to growing them as we can. And we also want to be part of the conversation about what we need. We want the higher ed to be responsive to those needs, and they've been wonderful in that regard. So we can target specific certification areas. I have Cambridge Central School is one of our schools in the residency and in three years they're going to have about 15 elementary teacher retirements 
And so he's looking very much next year for me to recruit elementary teacher residents for Cambridge so that hopefully they'll be able to keep them right in the pipeline and keep them on staff. So um, another thing is that we do a lot of learning and changing. Uh, this is a brand new program, so we've been pretty responsive across the board. Um, when we recognize that there needs to be a change, we make it. So for example, in Cambridge, we have a sixth grade resident. She's with the ELA teacher, and 100 sixth grade students rotate through her class every day, and she does the ELA with the ELA teacher. Um, in Beekman Town, we had another request, and that was the sixth grade team wanted to share one resident. And we hadn't used that model before. And we said, you know what? That sounds like a pretty decent model. Let's give it a try. And so Brad is with the sixth grade team. He gets to see all four teachers teach, which is a pretty rich and valuable um, thing, especially since he's seeing them interact differently with the same kids, right? Because it's all based on the relationships we build and the style that we use. So he's having an extremely rich experience, but we didn't want to force Beekman Town to do it our way. We wanted to be responsive to the ideas and needs of the district. So what are you getting back when you invest in this? Um, the residency placement actually costs between the resident, the attending teacher stipend, and the building leader stipend, and you know FICA and all those like other pieces. Uh, about $31,000 a year per placement. And so what do you get back? It gives the district two years to see this person through two full growth cycles, which results in more informed hiring decisions. And if the person matches and they stay and you hire them because you thought they were good, it's more likely they'll be retained because they already have had two years in the school community and know it. So they're not coming in cold. Um, some of our local superintendents report that often they avoid hiring brand new teachers because they don't feel that they're classroom ready um, and that this group is classroom ready. So one of the superintendents pointed out that he's really going to get to hire somebody with two years experience at the first step of pay. So it's going to be a continual savings over the person being in the district. Um, Building leaders, as I said, get to shape the candidate's learning. Um, and the other thing is, is that all of our lead teachers or attending teachers have reported that this has improved their instructional practice. By talking through their professional decision making every day with a teacher candidate, it's improved their own practice. And that's something that's gonna stay with them when the resident has gone on and impact them for the rest of their career. It really does build very reflective practitioners because you have to have that conversation all the time and think about why you're doing what you're doing. Um, the other thing that we found is that during the first year of the residency, the, the resident, once they're able and competent, uh, can start subbing for their attending teacher. Well, that's great because that's a, subbing is always an issue in every district. Um, and so Brad has been able to step in on several occasions, sometimes uh, planned, sometimes unexpected, um, which of course saves the district money. But not only money, it provides a continuity to the kids' education that's amazing. Uh, the teachers say to me, it's like having a little mini-me. Like I, I don't have to worry about three hours of sub-plans that might not get delivered. They know exactly where I am. They deliver it just like I would want them to. And the kids just continue learning as if I was there. Um, so how do we make that $31,000 sustainable? Because that's a pretty big chunk of money to put out for an individual year after year. So what we did was we bundled the costs, those $31,000 of costs, into a BOCES contract for shared services. And so Brad is actually hired by BOCES and paid by BOCES, and Beekman Town is billed for that. Um, and so it gets the, their, your level of BOCES aid next year, which if you reinvest back in the program, it cuts the cost way down. So what does it specifically look like for you? And trust me, I have this on handouts for you, so 
you can like spend some time looking at it. I know I'm like going through it quickly. Uh, and I'm definitely a paper person. <laughs> it's, it's just just for clarity. It's on the board portal. Oh, okay. I gave it out. Oh, perfect. <clears throat> um, so I actually, um, uh, Superintendent Mannix was wonderful. He sent me your actual BOCES numbers so it could be as, as close to accurate as possible. Um, so this first year, um, the uh, NEA grant is offsetting 40% of your cost. And next year, it will offset 20% of your cost because you entered later than the other um, districts. This year, in the other districts, they're only getting 30%. And next year, they'll only get 10. But we wanted to kind of balance it out because you were only going to be in the funding for two years. What that does is it allows you to step in. And I'll tell you a secret. Um, because the NEA money is private grant money, it's not state money, it's not federal money, and don't worry, this is all legal, I promise. Um, they, they check with all the lawyers. Um, it goes right into Cambridge Central School, who's our fiscal agent, their general fund. So you actually get aid on 100% of that cost. It's not like other things where the grant money comes off and then you get aid only on the lesser amount. You actually get aid because it's private money on the whole amount, which helps, uh, helps you step in. Basically, if you went, after grant money was all gone, if you were to grow the program to three residents in this district, and these are all imaginary numbers, uh, it would cost the district $92,148. And your annual cost, if you were reinvesting the BOCES money in that, would be $35,846. So then, so which is about eleven, twelve thousand dollars per resident, and if you break that out into an hourly rate, it's about eight dollars and forty cents an hour to have a resident in a classroom oh, with a teacher, wow. extra pair of hands, extra learner. Um, then, what's really cool about this one is then if you start subtracting the substitute costs and savings that you're making because. During the second year of the program, after Brad finishes in December, he'll do the EdTPA. Then he'll go into an alternate placement at a different grade level for six weeks. When he comes back to sixth grade, and he's been told he's passed the EdTPA, which of course he will, uh, he can sub for two days a week for the district in his certification area. So not just the sixth grade, but grades one through six. Um, that's 40 days. So if we add that 40 days plus the days that they can do for their own attending teacher, you start to see some real cost savings. And in Beekman Town, that would reduce the hourly rate to $6.18 an hour by the time you're done. So if districts are finding that it really is a very solid investment for their future, for grooming future teachers, uh, for the continuity and for... Um, their student, the benefits of their student learning. I'll take a breath. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, you referred to it um, one through six. Are you just talking about a specific person, or are you talking about that's the only? No, right now Brad is going for certification in childhood grades one through six. Okay. So, so he could like sub that? in that certification area. Okay. So in this building, it would be two different buildings, right? Elementary or middle school, right? Right. Um, but he could be used as a sub for two days a week in either of those, in any of those grade levels. So if he was um, going for, we'll say, birth through twelve, he could serve. He could sub anywhere up to the high school. Yes. Um, okay. Not that he was doing that, but I no. But the, there's a so New York State's weird now. Okay. And. Kindergarten and pre-kindergarten are a different certification. It's like pre-K through grade two. Birth through two, yeah. And then one through six. Okay. And then seven through 12. Okay. So if you had a high school resident in math mm -hmm. and their, their lead teacher taught algebra, mm -hmm. when they were able to do the subbing, they could sub anywhere in seven through 12 math. Okay. Does yep. that make sense? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just want sure. to, yeah, 
Hello again, Brad Clark. Um, some may be looking, oh, he looks pretty old to be uh, going to teach me. So <laughs> just some, some quick background. You were lucky. Um, yeah, I'm 41 years old and uh, made a career change last year. Uh, previously, I worked for the Olympic Regional Development Authority over in Lake Placid for 18 years, running the sports development department. Basically, getting youth involved with sports. I actually worked with uh, many Beacon Town Elementary School teachers, uh, coordinating field trips, uh, curriculums involved around our World Cup events. Um, I live in Peru with my family. I've got two boys. Uh, they're in third and fifth grade. So my work schedule got, got pretty crazy, doing a lot of events in New York City, working on the weekends. And you know, being a parent, that was my number one job. Um, you know, I was losing out on a lot of big things. I had always teaching had always been in the back of in the back of my mind. So when I looked into getting my master's in education and uh, meeting with with Sarah, I got an email about this residency program. However, it was just down in the Hudson Falls area. So with conversations with Colleen, I said, "This sounds like an unbelievable program." Even though I'm not making a lot of money, um, the experience. Is, is unbelievable. What's the possibility of something like this happening up here in the North Country? Um, and here we are. And from my experience so far here at Beacon Town, it's been it's been unbelievable. Um, you know, not only the day-to-day the -day hands on experience I'm getting in all the classrooms. Uh, as I mentioned, I I'm working with every sixth grader in science, ELA, social. Um, you know, co-integrated classrooms, and the one, my last point, the key point I like, I, I take one class from Plattsburgh State uh, every five weeks online, and it coincides, I'm actually taking an inclusion class right now with, with Sarah Hackett, and it's, it's great. What we're reading about and doing in our class, I, I, come, I come here to work the next day and I'm, I'm seeing it firsthand, and you can bounce ideas off of the teachers and staff, and so it's, been, it's an unbelievable experience. So. Just want to make that Thank you, Brad. Yep. Are there any other questions? I have well? a comment. Yeah. Um, I have a sixth grader who Brad knows. And um, so I've talked to some of the teachers, Mr. Vella and Mr. Lozier, who said they really enjoy having Brad or you know a resident and they look forward to continuing this program. Um, and I can tell you, I work in medicine, and when I have a student, um, it makes me better. And I think these guys are saying the same thing. Because it makes me think about what I'm doing, how I'm presenting myself. And, you know, I tend to just work. But when you have somebody who's there trying to learn from you, you can be a teacher for a long time and you can still learn. They ask you questions and you reprocess them. So, oh, yeah, you know. So I, it sounds like a great program to me. And from the teacher's perspective, if anybody's wondering, does that slow them down? Does that you know, interfere with their teaching, I'd say it's just the opposite. It, it augments their, their teaching. So just so you know, I'm going to make a note of your name, and when we start capturing video <laughs> testimonials, <laughs> you're going to be on the list. <laughs> yeah. Could you go back to that spreadsheet a little bit? The what? The spreadsheet. Sure. I just kind of want to point out, um, the, RO, uh, the grant offset, you have 40% and 20 you know, it's tough to always look at these when you have the, the BOCES return because it really is misleading in that in that in the first two years it's almost 100% offset because you get your money back the following year. Yes. So if you take if you take that whole that whole BOCES revenue and you slide it really to the left because that's where it really applies. The first two years are almost entirely 100% covered. Correct. Yeah. So I just kind of want to make sure everybody sees that that's the. So I'm sorry, could you say that again? The, the BOCES revenue line? Yeah. In reality, <clears throat> if you were to look at it on a on the cost of the actual experience, yeah. if you slide the whole thing to the left, it, it's really covered the first two years almost 100%. Because right. Because that, that revenue that you get on the second year really is for the first year. Right. Which is true if you stayed at one resident. Right? So our hope was that you might grow to a second resident. So that revenue would, if you invested it back in, it would basically cut the cost of having two the second year. Oh, just so, so it so all depends on how you look at it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what the district's goal is, and it's one of the reasons why um, you're here today, is that um, we've had great success and we expand the program. And we've actually looked at uh, other grants that are very similar um, to the Department of Education that I think Plattsburgh might be running.
and not to have competing. We don't look at it as competing, we look at it as opportunities uh, to, to take uh, teachers or aspiring teachers into this rich, pro rich programming that will mirror each other. It's only going to benefit our teachers and our kids, even though there's going to be two different, hopefully, oh, yeah. two different grants. I don't think people are going to care which grant you're in. Hopefully, they're going to you're going to enjoy the, all the new uh, teachers in a, in a residency rich program. That's, yeah. that's the goal. The Plattsburgh is going to think the Plattsburgh is applying for one more grant. The Bank Street? Bank Street grant. Is that the end? Are they applying again? They they didn't get the original seed grant, so they may be applying again. I think, yeah, I think they're yeah, I think they're they got asked to go back and they knocked on our door. So hopefully, if, if it doesn't work out, Plattsburgh, we're still super happy where we are. Right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, and we're happy to, to, to grow it and with you any way that we can. And uh, like I said, the good news is as the grant money dwindles and diminishes and goes away, uh, we're lucky that. The BOCES revenue stream is a very solid uh, state part of state aid that isn't going to just go away. Correct. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. So do you not, you don't need handouts? Unless the audience wants the handouts, the board has them. Okay. Does <laughs> All right, moving on, we will Thank move reports. Much. We're starting with um, Superintendent of Schools, Daniel Mitz. Okay, so I'm just going to move really to the budget process, and we're starting to see some numbers starting to come out from the Board of Regents, uh, of uh, business officials. <coughs> it seems like they, they're they always pretty aggressive with what their ask is, and they're asking for $2.1 billion. And that's a number we've seen before. And I think last year, by the time it was all said and done, the increase was right around $1 billion, give or take um, 0.1 on that. So that's an interesting number, $2.1 billion. Um, the federal, where we are with federal, we don't really receive any federal aid, so to speak, but we do receive federal grants. And we're just anticipating that those federal grants stay the same this year. Uh, last year we did have a slight boost in the Title IV grant, um, and most of our other grants uh, stayed the same. Our health insurance increase, um, still not out of the woods with health insurance last year, was about a 23 or, I think it was 23 percent increase on health insurance. And this year it looks like it's going to be another 10 percent increase on that. That's what we're budgeting right now. Good news on the retirement front. The retirement um, contribution that's required, it's uh, mandated, um, it's actually written into the Constitution, the New York State Constitution. Uh, this year, uh, oh, that, that dollar amount is based on a five-year return on the stock market. And this year, um, one of our retirement, we have two main retirement um, contributions. One is the teacher retirement system and the other is the employee retirement system. So if you're not a teacher certificated, a teacher administrator, you're the other one. And one of those two actually is going to go down slightly, so maybe that'll be a wash. We'll, we'll see uh, what that looks like in the uh, very near future. So we're hoping that our tax cap comes in somewhere around 2.5, 3.0. Maybe in February we're going to have that rough number. But if you guys remember every year, that kind of changes from meeting to meeting just based on different numbers that come in. Um, and different, and then we also how uh, you allocate you a couple different um, contributions for our um, billing aid and whatnot. But right now, based on what we're expecting and the high rate of health insurance, we're, we're looking at um, no new positions. In case we if we have a windfall, if the if the state says. Uh, and the, and the governor's against this, but the state says, let's run the foundation aid formula. A lot of school districts in the area would be would be hurt because they're overfunded. We actually would receive a boost. So if we if they even held those groups harmless and gave us our our boost, that could be a nice um, a nice addition where we could be looking at a couple different um, unique uh, program opportunities. And we will have more information because it looks like Gen Parliament is going to hopefully start on the 28th, which will give us a long-awaited full-time business official. So that's basically just an update where we are. We're 
We're more right now in a wait and see mode. We've talked to the administ uh, administrative team about the process and where we are. Uh, nothing really new here for them. Okay. And now I'm just going to leave. Other than that, on the reports over the vacation, we had a couple issues, um, somewhat serious issues. I was super happy with the administrative team to just uh, uh, really jump on these. Um, some one of them looked exceptionally uh, sensitive issue and um, motivate everybody else in the in our school community to come together and help our students. Um, as you, most of you know, we had a, a death, and I was super happy with the way our counselors, our administrators, uh, everybody came together um, to help all of our kids. So that was great. And then we had to send some emails out to some other administrators to deal with a couple other uh, concerns that were out there, I guess. And it was nice to have everybody so responsive, especially over a time when you're dedicating so much time to your family. So it's really great to have people uh, always willing to help. So I want hats off to, to that group. Is there any chance that Karen forwarded an update to you? Karen? Cameron. No, Cameron didn't. I was expecting okay. Mary not. Okay. No. All right. Um, seeing that Cameron is not here, we're going to move down to committee reports. Um, the committee that. Oh, no, no, can I just speak on behalf of Cameron, I guess, for a second? Uh, we did have a, a meeting. Um, Principal Bazai was in Florida. He was on a conference call. Dave Mann came in, and actually, you were there with Cameron and another student. And they had some really good ideas uh, for the district on how they could help this, help students with grief and um, the passing of uh, of their friend. And uh, you know, hats off to Cameron for he's very eloquent and passionate. And uh, some of those ideas are going to move forward and be embedded into what we do here at Beacon Town. So mm -hmm. it was, uh, you, you were there. It was pretty wonderful. It was really, it was really impressive. The level of maturity was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Over vacation, so that was great. Yeah. All right. Um, committee reports. Um, audit committee was the only um, committee that met since our last uh, meeting. Uh, we discussed our November 18th financial reports. Um, uh, it looks like um, as of November, our um, breakfast, lunch, and snack program did decrease a little bit, but that was mainly because of student absentee. Um, field trips, holidays, CV Tech, um, snow days. Huh? maybe snow days, and snow, yeah, and a, and a snow day. <laughs> um, so uh, we per, we are anticipating that um, that will increase again in January. Um, something that was really phenomenal is um, both the high school and middle school increased their um, food um, location availability. So we have additional carts, so it makes it a lot easier on our students to um, eat lunch and breakfast. Um, so I think that's a win for everybody. So that was very good. Um, some of the other things we discussed were, um, uh, we had a discussion concerning E-rate reimbursements um, from Westell Fiber inst Installation, which is, um, uh, an opportunity for our district to utilize some funds. So that was excellent. Um, we also discussed uh, splitting expense codes or distribution of expense codes through the middle school, high school library, compensate um, absences, and audit budgeting and expenses. Um, we will be meeting again um, to be announced uh, somewhere near the end of January, beginning of February. That's it for audit committee. All right. It's resolved that the Superintendent of Schools recommends to the Board of Education to approve the following minutes. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Mark. Second? Second. Mike, any discussion or questions? Yeah, in regards to the um, executive session, there were certain items that weren't on the minutes um, that were discussed in the executive session, and I don't think they were proposed before we went into executive session specifically without going into detail, state ed and um, a non-resident and non-staff member. Um, actually, we are not going to be talking about those things in the executive session. Um, so... Last, last, last month. Well, okay. last month. Because we're in approval of the minutes. Okay. Um, any other questions or discussion? All in, oh, sorry. 
I will ask. <clears throat> um, it's a good point to review the minutes. Uh, just, just for uh, clarity and including the process. Um, next time, we get some emails in response to any corrections. That'd be great. I did. Uh, I sent an email on whether or not we were properly in executive session. We spoke about those two issues. Right, but about right. specifics. We can correct the minutes ahead of time. Okay. okay. Thanks. All right. Um, are we all in favor? Aye. 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 No's? Abstains? Mm. Yeah, Andy abstains. <coughs> Resolution passes. It's resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education to approve the CSE, CPSE, and 504 recommendations dated 1 8 2019. Boy, I have a hard time with that. <laughs> All right. Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion. Andy? Second? Second. Jeremy? Any discussion or question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Noes? Abstains? Resolution passes. It's resolved that the Superintendent of Schools recommends to the Board of Education that the following personnel resolutions on this consent agenda Resignations, appointments, terminations, be and are hereby approved. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Mark. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Noes, abstains, resolution passes. It's resolved that the Superintendent of Schools recommends to the Board of Education that the following miscellaneous resolutions on this consent agenda, agenda appointment agreement between the Beatontown Central School District and Zephyr Brusso as per diem nurse and the employment agreement with Jennifer Parliament, business manager, um, schools. Correct. Okay. Be and are hereby approved. May I have a motion, please? A motion. Mike. Second? All second. Bolden. Any discussion or questions? Um, the, does that include this agenda? Um, that's a resignation. Is that something personal? That was before, I think that was yeah, one before. It says eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, let's see how we do this. Yeah, it's um, personnel. Eight He's in there. We're, this is yes. I just want to make sure that includes. It did include that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so that was our. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Noes. Abstains. Abstaining. Andy abstains. Resolution passes. It's resolved that the Superintendent of Schools recommends to the Board of Education that the following resolution on this consent agenda, financial reports and transfers, be and are hereby approved. May I have a roll call vote, please? Motion. Oops, sorry, motion. Motion. I'll motion. Second. Second. Mike and Mark. Discussion? Questions? Roll call vote, please. Douglas Beatty, Andrew Brockway? Yes. Kathy Buckley? Yes. Jeremy Connors? Yes. Michael Hagedorn? Yes. Holden Lehman? Yes. Ed Marin? Yes. Mark Sand? Yes. Pauline Stone? Pauline? <laughs> Pauline, yes or no, or abstain? It looks frozen. I think. Is she frozen? <laughs> Okay. Seem to be making a lot of noise before the vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's frozen. I hope. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I have to send you down to Florida, Mike. All right. Um, 
can we say resolution passes or do we want yeah, to? Yeah, no, it passes. It'll be in the vote Okay. All right. Resolution passes. Welcome. All right, do we have any additional items to discuss? Um, um, I just wanted to say that after I requested the um, attorney billing for Ross Piscatelli and um, the Gerben Ferlazzo firm that we have spent approximately $30,000 on the investigation started by the board president, and I think the public should know about that. Um, actually, it's probably going to increase with the litigation, okay. and um, that was a full board decision, not just me. There's no bullet taken on that. I know. All right. Um, is there anything else? Um, do you want to have that for a minute, Sergeant? No, it's just right there. Okay. All right. We have set aside 10 minutes for public comment. If anyone would like to address the board at this time. Can, um, I, can I tee this up for you? Come on. I can speak from wherever. Um, you, you come to talk about the water? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Sam Dyer. I reside at 227 Duquette Road in town of Edentown. I am currently the supervisor of the town. I've got a couple of my board members here. Um, hopefully there's more than moral support here. Um, Sam, can I just, 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 just for, just for yep. a second? So Sam called me, uh, I'm going to say three weeks ago or so, something like that. I did send out, you put in an update or sent out an email, I can't remember which one, mm -hmm. to the board. I know our phone call got cut short, but he was uh, requesting, um, we have eight community members down the road, I guess, near the river that have water issues and requesting to potentially maybe use our well water here to help them. And then we kind of said we'd have to talk later because yeah. there's a phone call came well, so I, uh, I, I spoke to Mr. Noonan beforehand, then I, then I talked to you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, um, I, I guess I'm looking for some relief for the homeowners that are affected right now. We are applying for a grant. Uh, we did get uh, turned down in the first round of funding. And that's why, you know, this, it's, it's twofold. Um, even if we do get the grant, we're looking at a couple of years of service work sure. before we can tie these people on. We are supplying them with bottled water right now. Some of these homeowners cannot even bathe in the water that they have because of the salt. I mean, we've, we've put the salt storage facility up but I think there's there's more than, than one avenue to pursue here. Um, I, I've been working with DEC. Um, we have we have a plan that we're trying to implement, but you know it's the same old thing. You know, uh, with no money, uh, we, we cannot provide the service that, that we need to do here. Um, you know, I, I've uh, as a as a recent and a, and a and an old town board member, we've always worked hand in hand with the school. You know, the athletic fields are, are yours to use. Um, you've, we've pumped fuel for you for yep. years for the buses. Um, and this thing, you know, uh, I know you can't give me an answer tonight, but I, I just want to give you a heads up. This has been going on for a couple of years. Um, and, and when I came on in January, um, Terry can attest to this, we were going to have two years of monitoring this situation to see if it's gotten any worse or any better. Um, Did you put some of those monitors over in our field area? Yep, there's, there's monitors in the, in the back because we've, we've tried to look at the whole area because if there's a problem that occurs, we, we want to be spot on. But what we found with some of the monitoring, um, it's not all from the town of Eatman Town. Um, you know, I've, I've, I'm under the impression that we've, we've done some other areas and, and there's some issues along Route 22, which is the state of New York DOT. Um, and, and we met with DEC, and of course DEC, you know, it's, it's not my ball, it's, it's DOT. So I, I do have another meeting with DOT, but I'm, I'm not trying to pass the blame. I'm trying to bring everybody to the table to work together. You know, uh, we have a job to do, uh, and let's face it, if it was somebody in this room that their water was affected, I think they'd be hollering and screaming and they'd, they'd have every right to. But I think the, the whole thing here is, um, it's not a lot of water. Um, I, I'm willing, and I, and I think I've got the support of my board, 
to pay for whatever testing has to be done to your wells to make sure that the water can be provided without affecting the school and, and the water that's already being used. Um, you know, if it comes to chlorination or pumps, we will pay whatever we have to pay. Uh, it's it's not a matter of money. Um, it's it's you know, and I don't know. Uh, I know you're going to have to discuss it, uh, but I would like to have an answer as as soon as possible because I I've worked you know I've, I've talked to the county health department and I don't want to bring everybody on board and and have you know the the board say no they don't want to pursue this avenue. I, I think we need to do something as soon as we can, and and I'm looking at you know using this source of water until. We, we have our own source up and running. And, and let's face it, it's good, I can tell you right now, it's gonna be a couple of years. I'm not gonna you know, blow smoke and say it, maybe a year and a half or something. It may be longer. But in talking with, with Mr. Noonan, um, apparently the water is not an issue. You know? But all that testing has to be done to make sure there is plenty of water. Right. And, and one good thing, if we can come to some sort of, of, an, of an agreement, <clears throat> the, the it, it's going to be summer before we can get hooked up and, and done. That's at the dry time, and, and that's when you guys are using the least amount of water that you that you need. I mean, the school's not in session, right. the kids aren't here, and stuff like that. But you know, I, I just uh, I'm I'm here to to let you know what's going on. And, and Mr. Maddox, thank you. Um, you know, he answered your phone. Um, he started the process. Well, it's it's hard. You know, everybody's busy. We've all got things to do. And you know, I'm I'm pulling my hair out trying to, to find some sort of band-aid for now. Not a not a solution, just just try to provide the normal things. We've got a couple people that have been drawing water on their own just so they can and, and if we get more rain, you know, it's it, it flushes itself somewhat and it's gonna take time, you know. Uh, but but we're trying to plan for the future and if there's a problem down the road with, with other wells, you know, we, we have to accommodate that. So do you, do, you, do you anticipate that? Do you anticipate the number growing? Well, the problem is, the more I've looked into this, um, there's one that didn't come to us until a couple a couple of years ago, and he'd been having problems since 2009. This, my first day as a legislator in Clinton County was the was the mess in, in Shazy Lake, and it took DOT six years to take care of that, and and they knew where the source was. But this isn't anything new. This is happening all over New York State and probably yeah. all over the country. And we, we found something that works to keep the roads clean, but it's not good for the environment. And and salt is, you know, if you know, it's 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 not good. Um, but um, you know, I I, uh, I hate to drop the ball. Is there a timeline or a time frame where I could get some sort of answer? No, uh, for. And I'm not looking for one tonight. I understand that. No, well, I'm glad you're here because I know we needed to have. a Mm -hmm. this actually and then yep. we had reconnected so um, one of the things that I only think I would maybe it's not the only thing the first thing that I think of is getting that assurance that Dan's right and normally mm -hmm. he's always right mm -hmm. but getting the assurance that we have enough well water yep. um, I'm not sure what else the board thinks of when they think of the request we have eight I think it's eight <coughs> homes right now there's there's eight homes actually there's there's ten homes that are affected Two of them we've provided enough water to so that they, they some come on, some go off. Some are single family homes. Uh, and let me give you some idea of the amount of water that's gotta be used. We're talking about 110 gallons a day, which I don't know if it sounds like a lot to you, that's, that's not a lot of water. Uh, Kevin Sponable, who had four people at home, was drawing 150 gallons of water a day. So, you know, we're talking a little over 1,000 gallons, maybe 1,500 gallons of water a day. Uh, and that's that's at the, at, at the peak, you know, um, but I, but like you said, the, the wells would have to be tested, you know, uh, I, I understand that. We've been working with Wayne Ryan from AES, um, got a book this high of, of facts and figures, I can, you know, provide it to anybody. Uh, you know, I think we've, as far as the, the town, you know, I, I thought, like I said, I was, I was under the impression that we we're going to have two years of monitoring, and, and I think I started to tell you, DEC in February of last year said that they wanted a plan ready to implement you know, in in, uh, in May, and, and it, there wasn't enough time, but we did submit our plan in August. Uh, they did give me enough time to get that done. But um, the problem I found is, in, and uh, if you can attest to this, it's, you know, they, they put the they put the restraints on you, and then when you do them, you know, it sits on somebody's desk. You know, and, and this is a time of year where, yes, there's a little bit of frost in the ground, but this is a time where we can get things done. Um, so that when the weather breaks, we can we can do what we have to do. And just so I, want, I think you made a really good point about our partnerships in the past. I know we have some new board members mm -hmm. um, and new administrators, but 
we have always worked together because when there's a need, and whether it's you know the sport, the sport uh, field has been great, but busing, youth commission, you're right about the gas. When our pumps broke down for years, we were going over there and been a bit of pain in your butt. Not your, you know, but then, but then. We said, hey, give us two more years because we're going to put some gas tanks in. You guys were like, fine. So it has been a true partnership. Well, and, and, it, and it should be because I look around this table, we're, you know, whether it's, more. Whether it's school, county, or town, we're, we're all paying the same bill. We're, we're all the same people. And Mike Hagenor, you'll remember that the town of Beatman Town really helped us with the natural gas in for Come On Head yep. with uh, Who's your, what are your board members at the time? Mm -hmm. Mike Morales. Mike Morales. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, and that was when I was a legislator. I asked Mike to, to work on that because Shay Z was having the same issues, and we haven't solved Drew Poultry's problem yet, but we're, but we're working on that. But uh, but I think that's that's what it takes. You know, the discussion here starts tonight. Um, hopefully, we can move forward. And you know, um, one thing you'll find with me is I'm, I'm not afraid to make a phone call or ask a question. And and if you tell me it's going to be a couple weeks, in two weeks the phone's going to ring. You know, I, I just uh, you know. If there's any question, anytime, Andrew, you know me. You know, uh, this has been, you know, uh, a, a problem that's that's got to be faced, and and I think working with DOT, you know, uh, they're another one that that doesn't want to accept any blame. You know, uh, so I just feel that you know if we get everybody to the table, and and the Board of Health uh, thought this was a great move to come to you to to ask you this because of the source of water. Okay. To, to, Go ahead. So, did you check on the liability issues for the town and the school? Like, if we were to provide water for you or to help? Well, that's why I started. You know, I, I, I'm going to work through this with DEC, but but I guess tonight, can I? I I'm going to ask you, can I continue my conversations with with the other entities involved, or or is this something that you don't want to look into? I guess that's. I think we we can get more. We should receive more information. Okay. I think everybody would be interested in that. And and I guess um, if you give me a contact person, um, I, you know I've got a lady right here that's very good with the with the emails and computer, and that's the quickest way to move stuff around. I'll I'll I'll, I'll admit, you know that's that's not my forte, um, but I I do want to make sure that you have every question answered, um, and and don't be afraid to ask. You know, uh, we'll, we're all in the same boat here. Uh, and I just, I just want to move forward because, to be honest with you, I would like to have water in these houses this summer, and and I, I really think it's doable with with this board's help. That's the only way it can happen. Um, Cheryl, Terry, do you want to add anything? Uh, and it's long overdue. Um, yeah. They're they're uh, dishwashers. They're replacing them every two or three years. It's rusting out all their elements. It's it's the water pipes. The yeah. water pipes. Well, I mean, it, uh, you know, as I'm sure they badly sleep over this, to think that this these eight families don't have drinkable water in their homes, it's just. And it's you know it's it's easy to provide them with drinking water, but you know uh, you don't want to bathe in something exactly. you can drink. Exactly, and, and it's uh, and, and you shouldn't have to. Uh, you know, they're they're but I, and, 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 and they're the all tubs. right in a, in a small area. You know, there's a couple on the Ashley Road, which are right through the what I call the old cow pasture down here, but they're along the Haynes Road and. And uh, you know, uh, what do so. you guys, have you guys ever spoken to when DEC discusses this issue with you about the, uh, the fracking issue that occurred on Western Pennsylvania and how they used water buffaloes with uh, reverse osmosis systems that um, with a three-inch line can actually do up to three or four houses at a time? Well, and that's and that's what we. Uh, we had talked, uh, I had John Canoza, the, and I've taken up too much of your time, but I'll educate anybody. Um, John Canoza and I had worked hand in hand because I was working on this before I stepped into this position, and we talked about a double cased well, okay? And at the house that I was, that I was telling you about, I won't raise anybody's names, but they, they did this, and it worked for about six years. And I said, well, I do not want to dump $50,000 in a well and, and have it last six years. You know, we just... I was in the back of my mind. I figured we could win and drill these people new wells because there is some good water in those places. But the problem with salt, you know, it's the same old thing. You know, uh, it's it's dense and it's heavier. So if if you're already in a deep well and you've got a problem, salt travels and it, and it's going to find that aquifer to to where it can get to it. And and I do not, you know, that's that was one of the things we talked about. Um, you know the. Uh, reverse osmosis at, at these houses 
and, and that's, that's a band-aid. And then the septic system can't handle the water that you're dumping on that lot. So we've, I can tell you, I can write a book. You know, we, we've, we've tried everything. So is it coming from the road salt? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What what happened? Uh, that was it. Was the way it was contained? You know, it was it, it, it had run into the brook. Is what had happened. It was surface water that was run off. Um, but you know, that's uh, it, we've contained the problem. Our, our numbers are coming down on the at the brook. We have less salt at our discharge than we do north of the city or uh, north of the town. And that's why I brought D, DOT or trying to bring DOT in because they've got a bigger problem than we have now. And we've done our due diligence, we've, we've done what we can to contain the problem, and, and now we're trying to you know, create a solution to, to take care of the water for those people. Why don't you call me on Friday, and we'll try to we'll see what resources you have and see if we can share some resources okay. and see how what, we can what time provide is these folks with some information. Well, you've got to go through her, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find a way. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie has a question. Yes. Sam, yes. Um, if they were to ask me for a legal opinion on how can we do this, my question would be, is your proposal basically that the town would like to access the well currently existing for the school building and take come on the property, build something to take water to those eight houses? All, all we need is a place to tap on the line. We will dig it. We will put it down below frost. And, and I'm telling you that we will incur any cost that the school wants us to. I don't care if we have to add more chlorine to your, your system or, you know, if a pump goes down, you know, and, and we've got to eat half the cost or something. You know, I, I'm, that's trivial. You know, we're looking at a $6.5 million project and we're trying to get three to $3.5 million to help with it. So if we can do this, and, and I don't want those people to have to wait two years yeah. for this, you know, uh, it's just, it, it's time, you know. Uh, and, and if I've got to come back next month, Dan, and, and speak to you again, I will. I just I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And if there's any question, uh, Jackie, uh, Joe Lavarendo is our attorney. And, you know, there's, uh, between the engineers, the health department, and I haven't found anybody, you know, I, I've got to talk to DEC, uh, but I haven't found anybody that doesn't think that this is a good solution for the part-time, you know, uh, in the intern to, to get this done. Question, Jackie. Is there? I mean, I think we should try to help the community as much as we can. Obviously, um, we're in this together. Is there? Is there? Or could you find out if there's any? Are there any state limitations that limits what a school district can do? Of course, there's state limitations. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also vehicles that I'm already yeah. thinking of. Okay. That. Yeah, because because that's the part that we want to anticipate. And unless and or maybe we could also work on. Created some sort of educational component around this with students and and uh, the staff. And, you know. Well, I've already I've written down. I got a note that I think <laughs> could be a legal vehicle. But I, I and I, I also know of another school district where the town takes water off of their property. They have their own well on the school property, and that's a whole different set of agreements. So I, I'm sure that that that's why I wanted to know what the idea was so that I could figure out a, a vehicle that it would work. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll work with anybody. I'll do whatever I've got to do. Um, and, if, and if you, you know, uh, I know Jackie, or, but whoever wants to be the contact person, um, let me know, and, and we will do everything we can to speed the process as much as we can. Any other questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing that concludes public comment. Excuse uh, me. I, um, we had a 10 minute limit. You uh, might over comment. I know we went over your 10 minutes for that, so I couldn't do something. Um, yes, but we have set aside two different 10 minute comments. Well, I didn't expect section. that at the end. I understand that. I um, but we've exceeded, excuse we me, but we've exceeded our 10 minutes and we need to keep our um, meeting on time. And um, we also have an executive session after this, so, um, so, what, so we will have to. Um, you are welcome to come back at our next meeting. I don't want to wait till the next meeting. I want okay. this answered now. Okay. It'll be a brief statement. It's a brief one-minute statement, and I am, you will stop Mr. That. Dyer at ten minutes, which I don't think you should have. Um, so I, I guess. Yes.
Okay, this, this, discussion, this discussion is over. Our public comment is 10 minutes, and we've already exceeded our 10 minutes. For the record, so, I just want to say. So I, it's resolved so that the Board of Education yeah. appoint a clerk pro tem for executive session. Let me just get a, let me just confer with Jackie some. I mean, I think it's inappropriate that we okay, might, we're no, done. I, I can make a we're comment. Done. I can make let's, a comment. Let's like find out what it's, Mr. Mayor says. Sure. Sure. You didn't stop it at 10 minutes. These people have been waiting here all night. It's inappropriate. <laughs> 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 that the Board of Ed Education appoint a, um, a person as clerk pro tem for this meeting. Any volunteers? We haven't discussed why we're going into executive session. Um, yeah, I know. If you look at your agenda, we're doing this one, and then I will read the resolution for executive session. <laughs> How about you, Mike? Sure. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a motion that um, Mr. Hagedorn is our clerk for ten. Motion. Thank you, Mark. Second. Second. Thank you, Holden. Um, any questions or discussion concerning a clerk pro tem? Um, I just clerk pro tem. Point of order, which takes precedence over this motion. Point of order, Pauline is not on the video conference still and at 7 people are allowed to leave the meeting early. Are you going to make a note of that? Um, we, <laughs> we always do our best to minutes. write down an ex what time a person enters and leaves a meeting. What time did she leave? Can we get back on task <coughs> Thank you. Hold on, I'm not Stop interrupting. interrupting. Hold on. Don't speak to me. I'm here for the kids, okay? okay. I'm here to do a good job for the community. And okay. you continually interrupt and make this look like a big clown circus. Yeah, like so, right, so we're going to... Uh, uh, excuse me. We're going to get back to clerk pro tem. Thank you. Um, may I have um, a... All in favor, please. Uh, uh, aye. aye. Noes, abstains, resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you. It's resolved that the Board of Education enter executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular person or persons. Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Mike. Um, all right. All in favor, please? Aye. 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 Noes? Abstains? All right. 